Now then, over the years, the Speakmans have helped hundreds of This Morning viewers tackle their greatest fears. Uh, but despite all of those cases, there is no let up for Nick and Eva. Today, it's Paula who needs their help. Ah, the pleasant sound of birds chirping in the morning. The perfect way to start the day. Unless, of course, the sight and sound of them makes your blood run cold. I've had a massive phobia of birds and I've had it all my life. I can't be around birds, I can't look at birds, I can't even eat any poultry. I love cooking, I'm a chef. Most of the dishes I do involves chicken, but we can't have it because of her fear. Going into town, I don't like that because, you know, there's birds everywhere. It makes me scared to be outside. She'll hide behind me, use me as a shield and try to walk away. I'm hoping that by meeting the Speakmans that I'll be able to face my fear of birds and be able to do things like sit on a beach and eat fish and chips because I'm not going to be worried that a bird's going to come along. To gauge the severity of Paula's fear, Eva and I have asked her to meet us at the local city farm. So Paula, obviously you've got a severe phobia of birds, which is why we asked you to come here today at the farm, because there's some chickens and we'd like to see how close you can get. And the reason we do this, Paula, is because it gives us an idea of, of how bad things are. I don't think I'd be happy being any closer. If you had to kind of scale your feeling of discomfort right now on a zero to ten, I'd probably be about eight at the moment. You're actually an eight. Yeah. We well, can see that you're really, yeah, really suffering we with can. this. We can. Should we go and get this sorted out for you? Yes. Go <laughs> on. Leaving the farm and chickens behind, we headed to Paula's house to begin therapy. So Paula, tell me when this, when you believe, how you believe you got this phobia? I just believe I inherited it from my dad. There is only four ways that we can get a phobia and uh, one of those ways is copied behaviour. Tell me about your dad and why he had a fear of birds. I believe that my dad had a fear of birds. Some neighbours of his, when he was growing up, had chickens and he had seen a chicken beheaded and it was running round without the head. How do you feel about birds singing? Because I can hear one in the distance. I do struggle with that. If they're on our roof, I can hear them. It makes me uneasy. To figure out just how uneasy Paula's fear is making her, we needed to show her something to gauge whether we're making any progress. Oh, no. You won't yeah. even look at that, will no. you? No, don't like it. No. OK. And then we've got this one, which is... No. No. Wow. OK. Clearly, we've got our work cut out for us. We need to make Paula understand that it's a childhood perception of her father's phobia that's created this whole thing. Your dad's phobia, you saw it from a child's perspective and therefore you put a child's spin on it. You blew it out of all proportions and your dad may have had a very good reason behind why he had his phobia, but actually, you don't. Yeah. You know, I can see that your dad actually got something wrong. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah. And this horrific scene frightened him, so he blamed the chicken. But what should he have blamed? The person who cut the chicken's head off. Yes, or the implement that cut the yeah. chicken's head off, one or the other. But who came off worse? The chicken. Absolutely. Is it time to put this story to bed and realise that that chicken was the one that suffered and it's wrong to persecute you know, the chicken as a species, yeah. and also every other bird that wasn't even involved. I get it from your dad's perspective, he was a little boy. And I get it from your perspective, you were a little girl. But you're not anymore, and it's time to grow up. Yeah. After spending over an hour with Paula, we finally got through to her that this whole phobia stemmed from a child's misunderstanding. What has any bird ever done to you? Nothing. Okay. What did the bird do to anyone? Nothing. Who was yeah. the victim? What did the bird do to your dad? Nothing. Nothing. The bird's it, the victim. Yeah. The bird is the victim. And yeah. uh, and who who caused this in you? My dad. Just so we can see how far you've come in this short space of time, we would like you to come with us. Yeah. Come on with us. Early today, Paula couldn't stand anywhere near a chicken. So we're taking her somewhere where she would never normally visit. Paula, we brought you to the International Centre for Birds of Prey because we know that you are so over your phobia and we want you to get close to a bird. Yeah, but not, not any bird. This is going to be a Harris hawk with a one metre wingspan. 
what we're going to do now is you're actually going to feed the bird. So I'm going to get a piece of meat, pop it on that stand, and the bird is going to come. Okay. This is the big test. This is the nearest you've presumably ever been to a bird. Yeah. Paula placed the meat down, and within seconds, it was clear to see just how far she's come in getting over her phobia. How do you feel? Wow. <laughs> Look how close you are to a bird. I know. What are you thinking? I never thought I could be this near to a bird. Look at that straight past you. Back here, right? I know. That was amazing. I know. With her phobia finally conquered, Paula is free as a bird. Well done, Paula. Well done. It's quite scary, that, on its own, when you're not scared of birds. Like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Cut something like that coming towards you. Well, we were yeah. talking to the... the who was it that was had Volker? Who was the uh, beginning of the show the other yes. day? Uh, yes, they were, that's the, it. The, the two girls, were, yeah, were yeah. Uh, having fun. And he, they said, and they were trained up for it. Yeah, but seeing one of those coming towards you is it scary. Forty miles an hour is a scary. Yeah. Thing. Well, since the Speakmans have had another amazing result uh, after we uh, we last saw them. Yeah, last week in our phone in with Deirdre, we spoke to a viewer who was suffering with PTSD after losing her husband, and here's a little bit of what she said. I 